So guys, we've got some news coming in from the Northwest and the family of Thomas Campbell say they have justice after three people, including his ex-wife, received lengthy jail sentences for their roles in his killing. The 38-year-old father of two was tortured in his own home after being ambushed by three armed men with weapons. He was tied up, stabbed and beaten for two hours as his killers ransacked his home in search of valuables, cash and drugs. Mr Campbell is said to have played an integral part in an organised crime gang and he was left for dead in the hallway and discovered the next morning by a neighbour. His loved one said he will be sadly missed and that their family circle will never be the same again. Today in court, Rhys Stephen, one of the three attackers who rushed Mr Campbell at his home in Tameside, was handed a life sentence and ordered to serve at least 37 years after being found guilty of murder. Colleen Campbell, who was married to Mr Campbell for a decade, was sentenced to 13 years in prison after being found guilty of manslaughter. It's believed she will serve two-thirds of a sentence in jail. She provided key intel about her husband's or ex-husband's whereabouts and their movements to the alleged mastermind of the plan to attack Mr Campbell, a 28-year-old man named John Belfield. Belfield, who's from Openshaw, is on the run and is wanted by police on suspicion of murder. I'll go through the story in a moment, but it said he and Miss Campbell were said to have formed an alliance against Mr Campbell, who was, at the time of his death, in a relationship with Belfield's ex-girlfriend. The third defendant to be jailed was the 38-year-old Stephen Cleworth, who was sentenced to life imprisonment to serve a minimum of 12 years after being convicted of manslaughter. As I previously reported in a story, he was not at the scene of the killing because he was on a bender at a swingers nightclub, but he played a key role in the preparation and the build-up. All three were also found guilty of conspiracy to rob. It was an emotional sentencing hearing today. Thomas's father described his son's killers as not animals but creatures. He said Thomas was the most sincere and beautiful boy. He had friends both young and old, which was representative of the person he was. Over 500 people gathered in his memory to release balloons for him after his passing something which I wish he could have seen. Since Thomas was brutally murdered every morning I wake up, the first thing I think about is him, alone in the house with those people. When I'm awake it's there, when I'm alone it's there, I know my family are feeling the exact same way. I can't call these people that did it animals because animals are beautiful things. All I can call them are creatures and those creatures I believe have given our family a kind of cancer. I know that I will die before my time because the cancer is eating me alive. The saddest thing is that, just like cancer, when we think that we can get through the day, it spreads to Thomas's children, my grandchildren's lives. When they are old enough to understand, they will carry it with them always. I don't believe there is a sentence in the land that could bring peace to my family, so I hope and pray that my baby boy receives the justice he and our family deserve. It won't bring him back, but it may ease our minds. Thomas wasn't perfect in the eyes of some people. He got in trouble in his life. But that does not give anybody any right to take his life in any manner, not least in the brutal and callous way it was. My eldest son has taken the role of the father to Thomas's children, and as they grow from the beautiful children they are, they will be loved and cherished enough to flourish with high family morals, just like their father. And in a statement from Thomas's brother, and big respect going out to Thomas's brother, because listen to what he had to say. Since the day of Colin's arrest, me and my wife have willingly stepped up and taken the children into our home where we continue to support and love them. Colleen has not made this easy, often speaking with the children and feeding them information which in our opinion confuses them. Colleen has regularly been telling the children during the contact that she's coming home soon and that she's going to take them away to live in a house where they will all live together again. This is hard to manage, the children are young and impressionable. We have pictures of Thomas and Colleen up in our home to help the children with the grieving the children still have regular contact with Colleen. Though these things are hard to deal with, we accept them for the sake of the children and for them to have the best chance possible to heal. Guys, the brother of Thomas, I'll tell you what, that statement there, that hits deep. He sacrificed his own feelings, whatever he feels with regards to what happened to his brother and his ex-missus, he's taken those children in and for the sake of the children, he's doing whatever it takes for them to heal. Big respect going out to you lad. He went on to say despite what has happened the children remain beautiful loving and we will work hard to make sure they never forget their dad and how much they are loved. The children are his future now and he will live on in them. I can't put into words the pain I feel and I know all my family feel it too. I can't think of any positives right now but the verdicts have been the first stepping stone 
towards us healing. Our lives will never be the same again and the stress of the trial and having to listen to just how much Thomas suffered will never leave us. Our friends and family have been amazing and supportive. We will always stick together, but the pain will never go away. So once again, I just want to say rest in peace, Thomas Campbell, and my condolences go out to your family. Guys, I'm just going to go through what actually led up to the killing of Thomas Campbell. So guys, we're going to go through a little bit of what happened. So Colleen could be seen on CCTV footage talking on the phone with the alleged mastermind of the attack just two hours before Thomas was ambushed at his front door. At the time, Colleen had her hair dyed blonde and she was in a front garden dressed in her pyjamas and despite apparently never met or spoke to John Belfield before, she plotted with him as a mum of four to exact revenge against their former partners. The contents of the conversation remain undisclosed and Colleen's decision to leave her home and children during the call suggests that the topic of discussion may have been sinister. Within a matter of days, she and Belfield had developed an apparent partnership with the shared objective of revenge. Colleen began speaking to Belfield after her marriage broke down and after Belfield's ex dared to move on from him and start a new relationship with Thomas Campbell. While she was on the phone to Belfield, Thomas had turned up at their former marital home to visit their two children. It's believed his daughter sat on his lap in the car before he headed home to Tameside and it would be the last time she or Colleen would ever see him alive. He was burned, he was bound and he was brutalised and he was tortured for two hours in his home in Mosley. There was blood splatter all over the carpets and the walls, a visual display of their ferocity after Thomas had been ambushed by three men at his front door. He was attacked with weapons, punched, kicked, strangled and stamped on, and he even had boiling water poured over his buttocks. He was dragged around his home as the attackers ransacked the house and they tried to take as much money, valuables or drugs as they could get their hands on. However, Thomas was found the next day, naked, apart from a pair of socks and his ankles were tied together with duct tape. But the collie knew what was awaiting her husband as he drove away from their former houses on Clay, even the prosecutors accepted that it was unlikely she wanted Thomas dead. Despite being nowhere near the scene of her ex-husband's murder, Colleen was put on trial accused of murder. However, we know she was found not guilty of murder and she's been sentenced. Belfield, however, he's on the run and he's wanted by police. Two of Belfield's mates recruited to beat up Thomas Campbell, Ree Stephen, who's 29, who's a convicted armed robber and Stephen Clemworth who was previously jailed over a knife attack at an Indian restaurant over in the northwest. They were also both convicted and sentenced. So it's believed that Colleen, she grew up in Manchester and she was brought up by a mother in a single parent household. She left school at 16, worked at a hotel and she had a first child at the age of 17. She knew Thomas Campbell from when they were both younger but by the time he came back into her life he had already been in prison. He was locked up for nine years after he took part in a robbery conspiracy in 2002 which involved the use of weapons including a samurai sword. He was sentenced to nine years in prison. The pair met again in 2008 after his release and they bumped into each other on a night out in town. Colleen told a trial, We just clicked, we really got on and it just seemed so right we were meant to be with each other. They had their first child which was a boy born in 2010 and they got married in 2011 and settled down together and then a daughter followed in 2015. Thomas and Colleen, they enjoyed spending money, travelling on luxury foreign holidays, wearing designer clothes all the time and driving expensive cars, were making lots of cash. On one occasion, they splashed out £10,000 on a 10-day holiday to Mexico, travelling in first class and staying at the five-star Hard Rock Hotel. They had holiday snaps on their social media, showing them posing with dolphins, drinking cocktails by the pool, and enjoying rides on a motorboat. They also had his and hers luxury cars on the drive complete with personalised number plates. Thomas Campbell drove a black C63 AMG and Colleen drove a black BMW X5. However, Colleen worked part-time at Matalan and received working tax credits while Thomas was registered as a self-employed fitness instructor. Cops decided to investigate and they believed that they were involved in drugs and organised crime. Thomas was a convicted drug dealer and had been back in court in 2010 
for cannabis dealing. In 2015, the Greater Manchester Police decided to investigate on where the couple were getting their money from. Their homes were raided, the Mercedes and the BMW were seized, and Greater Manchester Police had the operation focused on the Campbell's involvement with supply of cocaine. And the operation they focused on was Thomas Campbell's involvement within the supplying of cocaine in Clayton. The couple had links with convicted drug dealers, including one man who was caught in Cheetah Mill with cocaine worth just over £1 million. Both the couple were jointly prosecuted after pleading guilty to money laundering, enjoying around £100,000 of cash between 2009 and 2015. Eventually in 2019, Thomas was jailed for two years and Colleen escaped with a suspended prison sentence. Colleen visited him every single week in jail. However, after his release, their relationship broke down. She claimed that Thomas became paranoid and accused her of seeing other men whilst he'd been inside. Colleen made a number of allegations to police that Thomas had attacked her, placed tracking devices on her car or threatened her. And Thomas also made allegations about Colleen saying she had thrown things at him damaged his vehicle and was abusing him over the phone. The straw that broke the camel's back and ended their relationship was because she accused Thomas of cheating on her with her best friend. She told the trial, if he had an affair with someone I didn't know, maybe I could have got over it. I was angry because it was with my mate. She told the trial she was so angry, she went over to the woman's house and smashed the windscreen of her car and drove into it. For that, she was hauled before the courts and she admitted causing criminal damage and that year in 2021 they split and formally became divorced. Thomas then left the marital home and spent time in Spain and Dubai before returning home and settling in Mosley. Colleen claimed he'd fled abroad because he feared he was being investigated by police over the hacking of Encrochat. On his return to the UK, Thomas and Colleen aided to resolve their differences. Their previously hostile relationship became more amicable and a schedule of visiting and caring for his children was agreed. So how did John Belfield get involved in this situation? So he actually sent Colleen Campbell a friend request. Colleen did not know John, did not know about him. She was browsing her profile and she ended up liking one of his posts and then they ended up chatting to each other. But John, he had an ulterior motive. He suspected that Colleen's former husband was in a relationship with his ex-girlfriend. The next activity on John Belfield's phone was telling. He began reading an article which said, couple enjoyed five-star lifestyle funded by crime while claiming benefits. It was a report of the Campbell's court appearance in 2019 for money laundering. Reading the news article on his phone appeared to be the light bulb moment for Belfield. He was thinking, how could he get back at his ex-girlfriend, punish a new lover while profiting from it all at the same time? John was already known to law enforcement though. Intelligence collected by Greater Manchester Police claimed that he was heavily concerned in the supply of drugs and his attitude to his ex-girlfriend was made clear in a message he sent her on June the 28th. He told her, you'll never have a boyfriend, you will have to move country, give it a week and you'll see why and what happens when you take the piss. At his murder trial, Thomas Campbell, he was described as a big-time drug dealer and was said to be thriving in cocaine dealing. Colleen, despite knowing her ex-husband would react to any attack on him or his ill-gotten gains, was only too willing to help Belfield's alleged audacious plan to rob his rival in love and crime. Belfield and Colleen shared 35 phone calls and 68 messages and once met up in person. Within the space of a few days, the two had conspired for a common purpose, which was revenge. Colleen gave intel on her former partner, Thomas Campbell, to Mr. Belfield. And John Belfield then made his first move. Thomas Campbell had gone to pick up his daughter from school. John Belfield was watching every move. With the course clear, after Campbell had parked up and walked to the school, Stephen Cleworth, with Ree Stephen acting as a lookout, calmly crouched down and placed a tracking device on Campbell's van. Now, Thomas Campbell's whereabouts could be followed with a touch of a mobile phone. His ex-wife also did her bit and she actually wanted them to make sure they targeted the right car. She said, yeah, sorry, it's a small grey one. It's a transit connect with two kisses at the end. So basically, this gang now had the upper hand against... Thomas, constantly tracking his movements and they were also carrying out reconnaissance missions outside his home. Colleen actually texted Belfield and said, it's number 17, just to help ensure that they got the right house. 
So after the tracker was placed in the car, Belfield and Colin Campbell met up, and this was for the first time, and this was outside her beauty parlour in Drollston, and Belfield was said to have shown her the tracking device and how it worked. They spent half an hour in her car, and she took some time out from a busy sedge businesswoman and a single mum, and that night, Belfield and Clebworth were back in Mosley for a third visit, and they watched on from a van as Campbell arrived home and unlocked his front door around half eleven. Belfield then texted Colin Campbell, when witnessing Thomas going to his home and saying, Tomorrow. But the tomorrow never happened because in fact on that day it became a dress rehearsal because his attack was in place and they were going to do what they were going to do. However, Campbell decided to take his dog for a walk rather than go inside his home. So the plan was aborted but the gang stated that they're going to go back on Saturday, July the 2nd. But again, Belfield's plan hit a snag. Clareth, who was due to be part of the hit squad, was uncontactable and as I said in a previous video, he was on a bender at a swingers club in Rochdale. Belfield had texted him saying, this is what I mean about you mate, you can't even work with you bro. So because Clareworth wasn't there, Belfield needed a driver and that's where Carl Murphy came into play, a 50 year old. Murphy was an innocent stooge because he was unaware of what was to follow. Belfield turned up to his front door and asked him and his two friends to get a lift to the pub. The trial heard that after being dropped off in Mosley by Murphy, Belfield Stephen and a third man who police had been unable to identify decamped to a Vauxhall combo van which they'd parked on a drive next to Campbell's home. That house was unoccupied and to Thomas that van could have belonged to workmen. They were there for five minutes before Campbell arrived home. When he went to unlock his front door, he was ambushed from behind and he decided to fight off the trio. For 40 seconds outside, they punched and kicked him as they tried to subdue him and get him inside. Once they were finally able to shut the door, Campbell screamed as his desperate attempt at self-defence failed. Thomas Campbell had sustained 61 separate injuries. One had stabbed him into his right arm that could have killed him on its own. He'd been punched, kicked, stamped on, strangled and cut to his face. He was dragged around the house and, as I said, the robbers ransacked his home in search of anything of worth. And not satisfied with beating him, they poured boiling water over him. They bound him by the ankles and wrists with duct tape. Just before one o'clock, though, close to his death, he had the strength, Thomas did, to call 999 and on the verge of death he was too severely injured to answer the call handler's question. The call handler said, fire, police, ambulance, what number have you dialed please? I can't release your line until you say you don't need an emergency service. If you can't speak, tap the handset, cough or make a noise. But he didn't receive no response. The next sign of movement at the house was just before one o'clock in the early hours of July the 3rd and the door opened and the three men fled, leaving Campbell to die in the hallway. It was only 10 hours later when the alarm was raised because a neighbour had noticed that the door was open and when he went to check, he saw Thomas Campbell's body. Cops realised that these guys were professionals because the crime scene investigators were unable to recover any of the killer's DNA from the house with evidence of a clean-up at the scene. Police visited Colin Campbell later that day to inform them of her husband's fate. However, the day after she felt able enough to return to work, one of her clients had stated, look, I understand if you're going to cancel your appointment. I know the kids must be devastated and heartbroken so we can rearrange it. But she texts back and says, nah, I'll be in work and I'll do you both. So guys, once again, I just want to say, rest in peace, Thomas Campbell. I'm a condolences go out to your family. But this is a story of betrayal. The violation of your trust by someone who you believed was close to you. Hence. I never trust anyone. She boy GT. Keep it locked, keep it real.